We are live. We are live. Okay. Uh, I'm going to begin here in a moment here. Sorry if I can have everybody's attention. Sorry, I just want to start the whole thing going. So, uh, <clears throat> All right. I'd like to welcome everybody to um, the uh, Object RTC walkthrough. And um, we've got uh, myself, Robin Raymond, I'm from Folk Flash. I will be presenting and doing, uh, going over some stuff. And we've got Bernard uh, Boba from Microsoft, who's also going to help in the presentation. And then, forgive me if I mess up your name, but uh, Adalberto. Foresty, he's from Microsoft Open Technologies, different company, just to make sure that's clear. And uh, he's going to be uh, presenting the demo portion of today's presentation. So, so, the reason why we're having this meeting today is to explain um, why the community group came together, how it came to be. Uh, we want to talk about the different uh, APIs. Uh, the high level features that it offers and uh, how, to, how to implement an audio and video chat application using this API, um, how you can get involved in, and participate into this uh, process, and we really want to introduce the open source source code that's going to be ongoing and, and basically it's a call to action to get everybody as much as possible involved in this process because the more people we have input, you know, the more feedback we can get and, and really make this a uh, vibrant community. Uh, so there, we're going to hold off on the questions until later so I can get to this presentation um, and we will allow some question periods and just so you know this session is being recorded on, onto the live so we have to repeat some questions along the way and it's hashtag object RTC if you want to uh, ask some questions um, to the group on Twitter. Okay. So what is ORTC? Well, it's the JavaScript Object API, and um, basically, it's not just for browsers, and that's not the intention. It, it, we do want to be able to deploy our browsers, but it's not just for browsers. Browsers, we want to also make sure that's deployable for mobile scenarios, and make sure it's deployable in cloud scenarios as well. Um, it's an alternative to the WebRTC 1.0 specification that everybody's familiar with. And it's being developed in a W3C community group and not a working group. Next. Uh, so the community group has different IPR rules than, than a working group. So basically anybody who wants to uh, contribute just has to join the group and you, um, you implicitly declare your uh, your agreement to to basically open up whatever you give IPR wise to the group. Um, it's not a standards track, but it could become one later if, if it became an adopted technology. Um, and uh, you don't have to be a W3C member to join a community group. It's just it's it's a much more open uh, open thing. So next slide. Uh, it was formed in 2011. I'm the uh, chair and editor of the specification. Um, its goal is to basically expose an object to our API. So the ORCA community group is exposing the ORTC API. And basically it's formed uh, by a bunch of enthusiasts for WebRTC. We're all very happy with it. Um, it's actually formed by SIP people, not just um, other protocols like we are. I just want to make sure that's clear. It's also by people who have Node.js kind of interests as well, so that we're looking beyond the browser. Uh, so just to be clear, this is not a community group meeting, so you're not having to be members of Orca to be in this meeting today. It's just, it's, to, it's basically to recruit members and get more participation and explain to you where we're at and where we're going. Okay. Pardon? Oh yes, yes, yes. Sorry, you missed something. Thanks. Um, if you want to suggest changes to the API, 
Uh, we ask that you do uh, join the community group first and not propose changes here today. Um, the reason is because of RPR issues. We don't want to run into any. So please join the community group. And if you join the community group, then by all means use those forums that we have available and I'll discuss how you can contribute uh, to the process uh, later on in the presentation. Um, I also want to make a special uh, thank you to the uh, Microsoft uh, Open Technologies. Um, we, uh, the ORCA community group went, went to them and asked them to do uh, a demo and validate the API in, in, by way of a polygon, and they did so very generously. Um, they, um, they also provided the refreshments here today, so I just wanted to say a special thank you to them. It was really, really appreciated all the help that you guys have put into this effort along the way. Um, so in talking to customers, there's a number of uh, needs that have come up when they discuss WebRTC. One is there's a lot of interest out there in using the WebRTC protocol stack in development of native mobile applications for virtually every platform. Um, so that's one need. Another is analytics, diagnostics, and monitoring. A lot of these WebRTC apps that people are thinking of build at very large scale, tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of users. And so diagnostic and monitoring is very, very important. Uh, people have a lot of interest in building backend systems, particularly deploying to the cloud. Um, and so there's a lot of interest in tools such as Node.js to build server side and gateways. Um, all kinds of APIs relating to management of the cloud, management of, of servers that would occur, uh, stun and turn credentials, being able to control audio video mixers, SIP proxies, all of that infrastructure, being able to create it, being able to scale it uh, in, in the cloud. Uh, extensibility, we've heard a lot of requests for the ability to add things, particularly uh, codecs. I hear, I've heard a lot of requests for scalable video coding in particular and simulcast, and then of course, APIs that would be compatible with all that stuff people want to do. So, we've been looking at how to enable some of these potential uses with ORTC. And you'll notice that ORTC isn't just about the browser. Um, certainly, I'd say that that's the first thing we've been working on. Um, but there's also a lot of interest in mobile development. Um, and we'll hear more about the ORTC Lib SDK, which is under development. Um, and um, you can see the GitHub here. And another thing that we've heard interested in is extending this eventually into a series of Node.js modules. Um, and in particular, people want to use this for interop solutions, connections to call centers, connections to legacy video systems, things like that. And there is also that under development as well as a GitHub for that. Um, so another question we get asked is, does ORTC, you have to wait until this is implemented natively on browsers. Can you use it with the existing WebRTC enabled browsers? And the answer is yes. Um, the way to do that is there is a 1.0 shim that will be made available to maintain backwards compatibility. Um, of course, you can still use the 1.0 API if, if that's what you want, but the 1.0 shim will give you the ORTC API, will expose that on top of the existing 1.0 API. Um, so that gives you ability when the shim is done, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, to be able to write to the API and uh, get experience with it today. Um, 